For 26 years, the Hubble Space Telescope's continuing mission has captured the attention of the world with its awe-inspiring images of strange new worlds and exotic galaxies across our universe. And Hubble has a new image, and here to show us this new image is Dr. Ken Carpenter at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So for more than a quarter century, Hubble has inspired generations of people around the world with its views of the universe. Can you show us this new frontier field image? I'd be glad to. The um, explorations of the original Starship Enterprise and her successors have inspired many of us at Goddard to actually go out there and examine the real final frontier to find out uh, what's there in the real universe. This image we see here is centered on a massive cluster of galaxies containing hundreds of galaxies in the cluster, and then behind it we see literally thousands of other galaxies in the same field. And each of those galaxies has maybe 100 billion stars in it. Each of those stars has likely a system of planets around it. So there's a huge number of possible abo abodes of life and maybe even new civilizations. So this image is literally taking us back to the very edge of space and time. How is this image helping us explore the final frontier? Well, in order to get this image and to look back as far as we in it, are in it, we are using a, a trick of sorts. Uh, Einstein's theory of relativity ta taught us that if light passes by a collection of mass, like this nearby uh, foreground cluster of galaxies, it will bend. And in fact, it gets focused just like a big magnifying glass. This makes the faraway galaxies look both larger and brighter than they would without it. So using this technique, we are able to use these foreground galaxies that are 4 billion light years away to give us bigger and brighter images of galaxies that are near the edge of space and time at more than 13 billion light years distant. Now, science fiction like Star Trek has stretched our imagination for 50 years. Um, the Starship Enterprise and its successors explored hundreds of new worlds. How does Hubble compare in seeking out life in new civilizations? Well, we're working on it. We haven't found direct evidence for life yet, but we're making great progress on finding planets around other stars and starting to characterize them. Uh, we've started off by looking uh, at stellar nurseries, these areas of the sky where there are intense concentrations of dust and gas that are coming together, forming stars and forming planetary systems around them. So we're actually looking at stars and planetary systems in the process of formation. We've also uh, been able to look at atmospheres of planets around other stars by letting, observing the light coming from the parent star going through the atmosphere of the star and looking at the intensity of the starlight uh, versus color. And doing that recently, we sent a release out on Wednesday that showed uh, two planets that are devoid of light element atmospheres that might otherwise smother it and therefore might be good candidates for having an Earth-like atmosphere with oxygen in it. Uh, so we're we're both seeing planets, lots of planets around other stars with Hubbles and, and other telescopes, but we're now also starting to characterize them. Um, and we continue the search for signatures of life itself, both with Hubble, we will with the Webb telescope when it launches in 2018, and the TESS telescope, which actually launches sooner in 2017, will actually find uh, even more planets, more targets for us to look at. Now, Star Trek helped us imagine many wonders out there in the final frontier. What are some of the coolest things Hubble has seen? Oh, we've seen so much. It's hard to pick, but for example, uh, we've seen uh, colliding galaxies uh, where they, two galaxies pass by each other, sometimes through each other, and they make all these beautiful patterns and arcs of life and kick off new epics of star formation. We've seen black holes shooting out tremendous jets of material at really high speeds, hundreds of thousands of miles per hour, shooting over incredible distances. And of course, we looked deep into the universe, back toward the beginning of the universe near the Big Bang uh, in several directions on the sky now. And one of the biggest mysteries, the most exciting results to come out of this, Hubble along with other ground and space observatories has confirmed that the expansion of the universe is actually increasing with time, uh, which is something we didn't expect. We expected it would slow down because of gravity. So it's as if you took a ball, threw it up in the air, and instead of it slowing down and coming back to you, it started to speed up. It makes no sense. We have no idea what causes it. We call the cause dark energy, but dark just means we don't understand it. 
So it's a big puzzle. Uh, it's going to uh, take a lot of work in the future to figure out what's actually um, doing it. Hubble is working on that. We're building some new telescopes. Webb will look at it, but also there's a telescope in the mid-2020s called WFIRST that we uh, intend to launch to study dark energy in detail and maybe solve the mystery of what's, what's causing the expansion of the universe to get ever and ever faster. Now, how has science fiction like Star Trek inspired you? It was uh, critical, actually, I think. Uh, of course, in the 60s, there was the Apollo, uh, Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs to help inspire. I had read science fiction in, in general, which got me interested in the field. But Star Trek is perhaps the single most important thing in getting me to go into a, a scientific field. And in particular, uh, I remember an episode where they gave the name of a star and I got curious about whether it was a real star or whether they just made it up. And I went to the library, picked up an astronomy book, confirmed it was a real star, but in the process, of course, opened an astronomy book and I saw this wondrous stuff in there and I was hooked. And I never looked back um, from that date in the, in the mid 60s and knew I wanted to be an astronomer and uh, was able to make the dream come true. And where can we see more of Hubble's amazing images? Uh, I would go, uh, first of all, to the, the main Hubble website, nasa.gov slash Hubble. You can also follow us on Twitter at the uh, handle NASA underscore Hubble, and you'll see a, a constant stream of, of new material coming out of there and links to other resources as well. Lots of information out there for your enjoyment. Great. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.